Hey guys, it's Rishi once again. Welcome to our video where we will be focusing on our red level maths. This video is focused on your higher level algebra multi-step problems. And in this video, we will delve into complex algebraic equations that require multiple steps to solve. We will cover various techniques to help you break down and simplify these problems, which may include factorizing, substitution, and simplifying expressions. Now, with a strong foundation in algebraic concepts and a firm understanding of the order of operations, you will be able to confidently tackle even the most challenging multiple step problems. So whether you're a student preparing for an exam or a professional seeking to enhance your problem solving skills, this video is for you. So let's dive in and master the art of solving higher level algebra multi-step problems. So a student is asked his age and he responds, my age is nine less than half my teacher's age. The teacher is asked his age and he responds, my age is three times my student's age. So find the age of the student. Well, let's call the age of the student S. and the age of the teacher, T. And from the first sentence, we can write an equation, which is the student will equal half of the teacher minus nine. And from the second sentence, we can also write an equation, which is that the teacher equals three multiplied by the student's age. So again, I hope you can see how I've extracted that information from just reading the first two sentences. And now we can substitute the second equation into the first equation. So we can simply say a half multiplied by three S minus nine. And that would then give us the student's age. And if we simplify this, we'd get S equals three over two S minus nine. And now again, if we make S the subject here, I'm going to multiply both sides by two to get rid of this fraction. So then I am now left with 2s equals 3s minus 18. Remember now, I've had to multiply both sides by two. And so by doing this, we can subtract 2s from both sides as well. So we're now left with zero equals s minus 18. And if we take the minus 18 over, we now know 18 equals S. And so by doing this, we know that the student is 18 years old. So what have we learned here? Well, we've learned to read the problem carefully. And it's important to read the problem thoroughly and make sure you understand what it's asking for. Underline key information and identify what you need to find. And this will help you stay focused and avoid making careless mistakes. And with that in mind, let's go into the next question. So now for each word problem, we need to define a variable, write an inequality, solve the inequality using inverse operations, and then check our answer so that it makes sense. So the Jalopy Car Rental Company charges a rental rate of $45 per day. The Dodgy Car Rental Company charges a rental price of $38 per day with an initial charge of $75. Now find the minimum number of complete days of rental required such that the dodgy car company is cheaper. So remember, we need to break down the problem into smaller parts. So let's define, firstly, let's have X as the number of complete days of rental. We will then have C as our total cost of the rental. And for Jalopy, the cost of rental can be represented as CJ equals 45X. So again, that's the cost of Jalopy. And for Dodgy car rentals, the cost of the rental can be represented as the cost of Dodgy equals 38X plus 75, hence the initial charge. And we want to find the minimum number of complete days of rental required 
such that the dodgy car company is cheaper. So in other words, we want to find the value of x that satisfies the inequality. So what should we do here? Well, let's represent this as CD is less than CJ. And remember, that's because we want it to be cheaper. So now if we substitute the expressions for this, we would get 38x plus 75 is less than 45x. And now if we go ahead and simplify the inequality, what are we left with? Well, so if we put the x's together, we will get 7x plus we will get 7x, which is greater than 75. So now we know x is then greater than 10.714. And please remember that we must round up to the nearest integer because we cannot rent a car for a fraction of a day. Therefore, the minimum number of complete days of rental required, such that the dodgy car company is cheaper, is 11. And let's check the answer by comparing the cost of the rental for each company when renting for 11 days. So, so let's go ahead and take our first car company, which is Jalopy. And I'll simply write out my CJ, which equals 45 multiplied by 11. And that gives me $495. And then if we go for the dodgy company, that's going to be CD, and we'll have 38 multiplied by 11 plus the initial charge of $75, and that's 493. And now since the cost of the rental for dodgy is less than the cost of the rental for the jalopy when renting for 11 days, our answer of 11 days is correct. And there we have it. So I hope my steps were clear when we took this multiple step problem and broke it down into smaller parts. With that in mind, let's go ahead and dive into the next question. So yellow cab taxis charge a £1.75 flat rate in addition to a 0 0.65 per kilometer. Now, Katie has no more than $10 to spend on a ride. And if she lives 14 kilometers away, Will she be able to get all the way home? So again, we're going to take the cab value and the distance that Katie travels as x. And we'll equal this to our flat rate plus 0 0.65 multiplied by the number of kilometers. Now, if she has no more than $10 to spend, then we can set up the following inequality, which is going to be cx, and it has to be less than or equal to $10. So now if we go ahead and substitute this, we would get 1.75 plus 0.65x is less than or equal to 10. And if we go ahead and simplify this inequality, we would get 0.65x is less than or equal to 8.25 because we subtracted the 1.75. And so x must be less than or equal to 12 pound 69. Therefore, what can we assume? So we can assume that Katie can get all the way home if she lives 14 kilometers away. However, if she lives more than 12.69 kilometers away, but less than 14 kilometers away, then she won't have enough money to pay for the ride home. So now we need to find out how short she will be. So let's use the inequality that we've been working with. So now we can simply state 1.75 plus 0.65x is greater than 10. And so if we subtract 1.75 from both sides, what are we left with? Well, it's the same 0.65x, but this time is greater than 8.25. Remember in our previous step, this was less than or equal to, but now we're working out how much short she will be. So if we divide both sides, by 0 0.65, what are we left with? So x is greater than 12.69 kilometers. Therefore, 
If Katie lives between 12.69 and 14 kilometers, she won't have enough money to pay for the ride home. So let's now go ahead and work out the difference between the cost of the ride and her available funds. So again, we'll take the cost and label it as X, and that will be minus 10, which equals 1.75 plus 0 0.65, X minus 10. And as we saw earlier, it equals minus 825 and plus 0 0.65. So for X now being 12.7 kilometers, what does this come up to? Well, let's substitute it. So we've got 8.25 plus 0 0.65, and in brackets, we can put down 12.7, and that equals to minus 0 0.005. So therefore, Katie will be short by approximately 5.1 cents. We can say 5 cents, and there we are. So once again, remember, that multi-step problems can be daunting, but breaking them down into smaller parts can make them more manageable. So what did we walk away with this question? Well, try to identify what steps are necessary to solve the problem and write them down. Then tackle each step one at a time, checking your work as you go. And this will help you stay organized and avoid getting overwhelmed. Alrighty, let's move over into our second last question. In a chemical reaction, the mass of a product grows 11 grams per hour. The current mass of the product is 46 grams. So when will the mass of the product first exceed 101 grams? So what do we do? We'll start off by defining our variable. And X is going to be the number of hours that have passed since the current mass of the product was 46 grams. So we can write hours past. And we can then set up an equation using the information given in the problem. And the equation should represent the relationship between the current mass and the mass of the product x hours from now. So we're going to get our current mass. And we're going to simply add this to the mass grown in x hours. And we're going to equal this to the mass in product in x hours. Marvellous. So what do we have? We got 46 plus 11x, which then equals 101. And so now we can solve x. So if we take 11x, which equals 101 minus 46, that gives us 55. And so now x is 55 divided by 11. So we can simply say x equals 5. So we now know that it will take five more hours for the mass of the product to exceed 101 grams. And there we are. Beautiful. Okay, let's move on to our final question. You've come really far, so let's keep this up. The seventh grade class is putting on a variety show to raise money. It costs $700 to rent the banquet hall that they are going to use. And if they charge $15 for each ticket, how many tickets do they need to sell? in order to raise at least $1,000. So once again, we're starting off with assuming the number of tickets that they need to sell is going to be X. And the total amount that they will make from selling X tickets is 15 X dollars. Now the total amount they need to make at least is $1,000. So how do we represent that in an inequality? Well, we can write 15x minus 700 has to be greater than or equal to 1,000. And if we simplify that, we can have 15x, which is greater than or equal to 1,700. And then if we divide both sides by 15, we can say x is now greater than or equal to 113.33. And if we round that up, that will give us 114. So they now need to sell at least 114 tickets to raise at least $1,000. And there we are. That brings us to the end of our video. Thank you for watching this video on solving multi-step algebra problems. I hope you found these tips and strategies useful 
and that may help you in your future math studies. Remember, practice is key when it comes to mastering math concepts. So keep practicing and challenging yourself to take on more difficult problems. Mathematics is a fundamental skill that has countless applications in the real world. And it is essential to success in many academic and professional fields. So keep working hard and strive to improve your math skills. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe to my channel for more math content. And feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.